You might be in the same situation that I was in, where I wanted to move my music from one distributor to another. And you might have seen my DistroKid video where I talked about getting banned from DistroKid and how I had to move my entire catalog of music from DistroKid to AWOL. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step process that you need to do to move your music from one distributor to another without losing stream counts and without duplicating your release on accident. It's really crucial that you follow everything I say step-by-step, -step. so without further ado, let's dive right in. When moving your music from one distributor to another, there's one thing to keep in mind that's really important, and that is you don't want to confuse any of the streaming platforms that already have your music. If they already have your song, if Spotify already has your track and it's live, you don't want to re-upload and create a duplicate release. So when you're re-releasing something on a new distributor, you want to make sure that you have all of the data identical. And the things that you're going to want to collect right now are your UPC codes, your ISRC codes, the exact song names, the exact artist names, and the exact album title. All of those things need to be exact. And the way that you could find all of that information is just by diving into your old distributor. I used to be distributed by DistroKid and unfortunately I don't have access, but if you sign into your DistroKid account, you can get all of that stuff. But when I sign in, all I get is this screen where they want me to restore my account, even though I'm banned. But if you go in your distributor, whether it's CD Baby or TuneCore, you most likely will be able to find all of that information. But let's say you're like me and you don't have access and you still need to find your UPC codes, you need to find all of the exact information that you need to use to move your music over, I'm going to show you an alternate method and it's the method that I had to use uh, because I didn't have access. So this is universal whether you're on DistroKid or CD Baby or TuneCore because I'm not going to use DistroKid at all at this point. So let's just close this out. So what I'm in the middle of right now is moving my film soundtrack over to AWOL and as you can see I kind of got started before I hit record on this video. But the important thing is looking up the information. So I wanna show you a website called ISRC Search. That's gonna be really important. The URL is isrcsearch.ifpi.org. Okay, so I'll link that in the description. The second really important resource that you're gonna need is the developers portal at developers.spotify.com. And I'm gonna show you how to use both of those right now. ISRC search is really straightforward. If a song has been released before, ISRCs have been created. And so all they had to do is search my name and all of my releases came up and I was able to look up the ISRC of the song, right? That's the code per song. And then I also was able to find out the UPC code, which is the code of the album. And I need both when moving my tracks over to AWOL. So if I go to the release information, you'll see right here, I had to drop in my UPC code and I had to use the old one so that AWOL doesn't think I'm uploading a new album that doesn't exist already. This album already exists because I'm moving it over. So that's really important and you can find that on the ISRC search website. Secondly, when I'm inputting the track information, I need to edit the track info and make sure that I'm putting the ISRC from the first release. So the way that I do that is I just look up all of my releases and I look at the track that I previously released called Wood and Steel. And as you can see, it's already in the ISRC database. So I just look at my track, Wood and Steel, and I look at the ISRC, I just copy, and I paste it right into the new distributor right there. And the reason why that's important is because if I don't copy and paste that, AWOL as a distributor, all distributors are gonna do this, they're gonna create a brand new ISRC code because they think it's a brand new song. That's the crucial part about moving your catalog instead of just uploading a duplicate. So I know I just did a lot of talking. I'm going to walk you through it right now. So this song, Dust, I haven't inputted any of the details yet. So I'm going to click edit track. First of all, I have to edit the name to take the number out. That's really important. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle this. Do you have an ISRC switch over to yes? and then it's gonna allow me to input my own ISRC. Then I need to go to ISRC search and look for my song Dust. Well, it's not on this page. I'm gonna go over to this page. There it is right there. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the ISRC from this song 
and paste it into my new distributor AWOL. And it's as simple as that. Then I just need to select the artist, songwriter is already selected, save and close. You don't have to have AWOL to do this. You can do it in any distributor. You just need to make sure that the information is accurate from your first release and it's being carried over. Now, when you're actually going through this process, when you're actually doing the transfer, the best practice, if possible, is that you want to have your music live on your old distributor while you're moving it to the new distributor so that there's overlap. So to say that, in other words, you do want distribution on both platforms at the same time for a, a couple days or so so that there's no hiccup so that your music doesn't get taken down off of Spotify and then it has to be put back up you don't want any of that so you do want overlap you want it just to smoothly transition from the old distributor to a new distributor so that is just a quick tip I had to go on a bunch of support chats to figure that out but it is a fact that you do want the distribution to overlap so you might be wondering about this sound recordings copyright right here. And that also needs to be accurate as of the first release as well. And that's why I mentioned the Spotify developers portal earlier. The Spotify for developers portal is your look into the back end of the Spotify algorithm. And you get all of the metadata and all of the really detailed code that is behind Spotify on the back end. So I wanna get the sound recordings copyright for my track. And the way that you do that is pretty simple, but it's also a little bit technical. So try to follow along. Go to Spotify, either in the browser or the app, and go ahead and copy the album link. Next, what I want you to do is I want you to click console, then go over to albums. Then once you're under albums, click get an album. And then I want you to paste that information in the ID. So this is too much information, so we need to delete some of this code. So at the question mark all the way to the end, go ahead and hit delete. And then at the slash all the way to the beginning, go ahead and hit delete as well. And what you're left with is the ID of the album. Next, click get token, then click request token. And then the last step is just clicking agree. And then once you've done that, click the try it button. And then you're gonna get spat out a whole bunch of return from your ID input. And if you scroll down just a tad, you will see the copyright information for the album. And it's just right here, 2017 Limebold Records. So that's what I wanna copy exactly into the new release. So I'll do that right now. 2017 Limebold Records. And that's it. So at this point, guys, you pretty much just wanna rinse and repeat all of these steps. Make sure you're using ISRC search to get the existing ISRCs. Or like I said in the beginning of the video, if you still do have access to the old distributor, for example, if you're still able to log into DistroKid or you're still able to log into CD Baby or what have you, you can probably find all of that information in the portal of the original distributor. But I just wanted to show you another method just in case you're in the same boat as me where you don't have access anymore and you still have to move over your music accurately to preserve stream counts, to preserve all of the playlists that the songs have previously been submitted into, all of that good stuff, you don't wanna lose it. So follow these steps, I hope this video was really helpful for you. I'll leave a link in the description to all of these places just so you can kind of have an easier time recapping all of the information in this video. So best of luck with this process and best of luck with your music and I'll see you guys in a future video.